What is good? We're back with another edition of a full tripod. Got my guy Matt Foreman over here. How you doing, Matt? Uh, doing swell. Find him on the Twitters at Fat Mormon. Got the one and only Big Company, Big Co over here in the house for another round. Good to have you back. Great to be here. Great to be here. Big Co. Not Big Co. Company. Just uh, for the OGs. Yeah, Big I know. Company. I know. You know. You know. Shout right. out. Shout out Zay Jones. Shout out Jay Jones. Say my name. We're uh, two TDs the next week. Jay Wayne's got the night off. He's he's hanging out. Um, we're doing another super flex tight end premium startup. We did one with the Patreon people, uh, but this time instead of going through all the top stuff here, uh, we're gonna pick up in like you know the sixth round or so because we get so involved and we talk about so much off the top that by the time we get you know this far down for the general public, we're usually on to. Uh, getting out of there um, so we're just going to kind of pick up there and use it as a springboard of other conversations of you know team builds and you know who you might be drafting and who you who you're targeting where like uh, running backs you like here maybe who could be a trade target because you like the value where they are like just in general so just going to use this as a springboard to sort of have a bunch of different conversations as well as you know talk a little bit about the draft so um, in our fashion, it will probably go down multiple different rabbit holes. Uh, so we appreciate y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, like, comment below, five-star reviews, all that jazz. Revelry Brewing Co. for the FF Dynasty t-shirt. Looks sort of like that awesome sign right there. It's very comfortable. Go support the team. Um, <laughs> and you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com backslash the FF Dynasty. Y'all boys ready to roll? Go team. <laughs> go, go Tigers. We're the devils. The devils. It's a face painter? Yeah, I wasn't going to paint my face. Paint my body. <laughs> I'm, so, um, I'm so lost. Seinfeld. It's Seinfeld, mm, but I'm yeah. just jealous of the, yeah. those uh, voices that Casey can do. I, I got one voice. It's mine. It's, I'm so bad. <laughs> it's mine. Can't do anything um, else. George likes his chicken spicy. That's all I got. <laughs> George does like Not bad. Good draw. Way to, way to pull that out. Um, any Anything significant in those first six rounds that you guys really want to talk about, or should we just jump right into um, getting into this kind of picking up six, seven round here? I'm looking over here. So, you know, I think it was pretty standard fare. We're, we're super flex, tight end premium. A bunch of quarterbacks went off the board, and these are patrons and a couple other random people that we know uh, in here. Uh, this draft was probably actually a little less receiver heavy than, than typical. Um, so some receivers kind of got pushed down a little bit. Uh, we did a DLF ADP review yesterday um, and, and just where our quarterbacks are as opposed to their quarterbacks, like they're having these quarterbacks that were taken in the fifth, sixth round, they're in the third, fourth round, uh, which is wild to me. And seemingly if I was in that draft, I would be pretty stoked about that. Just as long as you don't miss out on every single one of them, you're okay. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's going to be a lot of other value to be had. But other than that, let's let's just pick up right in in the sixth round here. Um, we got Traylon Burks at six one, uh, Javante Williams, and if you're watching Jameson. on if you're watching on uh, YouTube, you can see uh, all the board going off before. I, I would read them all to you, but it'd just basically be me reading out a bunch of names, which really wouldn't help you out in the long term if you can't see it anyway. Jameson so, Williams, and Jameson Sixth. Williams. Yep. Uh, Otherwise, that'd be a steal on Javante in the sixth. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, Garrett Wilson. Uh, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Hollywood Brown, Dalton Schultz, Jerry Judy, Mac Jones, uh, Jacobs, Zeke, and Devonta Smith uh, to start our mock here off in the sixth round. Um, and obviously at this point you, you do have some team builds going on, but we kind of talked about it last time. Obviously you are trying to build a team, but you're not setting a roster anytime soon. Um, so you can make the appropriate adjustments. But I guess that's a good jumping off point is, is where – you know, how do you guys look at that? Is that something that, as you get to this point, are you are you trying to fill out the roster in the sixth round, or are you you still just drafting? Hey, I might really need that running back because maybe I only have one, uh, and and you're just gonna say, hey, there's still all these good wide receivers out here because the way the draft played out, maybe they got pushed down a little bit or quarterbacks or whatever. I think normally I just draft based on who I would take for like position, like. I don't take position into it, but I know we talked about that last time about team build, and I definitely tried to take that more into consideration, well, at least for the first eight rounds in right. this one. Right, and you do have one of these teams. Big Code does not have one of these teams. Uh, your team 12, 
Um, I had team six here, and uh, I know my thing is over team one, but we're just going to, at the end of this thing, possibly go through some later round guys that, that, that we like here. So um, how about you, Bako? This sixth, seventh round was right where we got into that part of that discussion last time based around the James Conner stuff, uh, the conversation that, that where that jumped off and then it turned into Leonard Fordette and stuff like that. You know, obviously – James Conner and Leonard Fournette are set up to be fantastic running back fantasy point scorers this year. But you look at somebody like once the season gets started, you know, I've, I said it last time, how are you taking James Conner in front of Cortland Sutton? You got him, um, you know, St. Brown, I'm on Ross St. Brown right here a whole round later where somebody took James Conner. Like once the season starts, you're not going to be able to get that for that running back. Right. You Once know? the season starts, instead of him being 27, he's already 28. Exactly. that's next season. And by the time, you know, halfway through the season, the other guys in your league think he's 32. Right. You know, um, now whichever one, both of those guys may be crushing it and there may be, you know, one last ditch effort to get a, you give them, you give up Fournette plus something and get a first maybe. Maybe not this year coming up because of the 2023 you know, lore and the love of everybody's those draft picks and which may end up being great. But, you know, that's the kind of the way I look at it. Like in that draft, yeah, you might need a running back in that spot. But if you force that spot, you might be giving up so much equity six months from now. As soon as the season, I mean, not even six months, but of course, obviously now. But let's say you're starting up in August and the season starts in three weeks Mm -hmm. and Three weeks into the season, James Conner, Leonard Fournette, they may be crushing, and you may be you may find that one team a couple of weeks into the season that needs that te- needs that running back more than you that you could sell them, but you're you know you're giving up the opportunity cost of dragging in you know somebody on your team that has more long term dynasty value. Of course, you can't just go. Th- I'm never just going and drafting all 23 year olds. That's just never how I've done it before. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying don't get any old guys because I've loved to pick old guys at value. It's just I'm not going to force that running back if it happens to be, you know, I, I've, I'd love to figure out how to be in the right spot at the right time to feel like Elijah Mitchell was my value. Or, hey, I can actually grab A.J. Dillon here even though I think that he may not be startable for a little bit of the season and i got to figure it out. You know, I'm picking somebody like that, hey, i got to put him on my bench. Not, not Mitchell's case, but Dillon's case, you know, I – Finding that running back, when and where to take them in the middle. There's so many fun names back here, right. but you also have to look at, you know, some like a three rounds later, a Kadarius Tony. He could easily come out, you know, with a new offense and a new, you know, new new coaching staff. He could come out and be featured potentially, and just have a meteoric rise in value where you're not getting that out of those old running backs. But those old running backs could definitely help you get to help the, you. If they stay healthy, they could help you win right. the championship. They're definitely going to help you get to the playoffs. You ain't getting there without them unless you get lucky somewhere around. The, you know, it's, just, it's, it's it's there's so much. It's very big. It gets very busy. Right. You know, yeah. there, there's a lot of different ways you could you could break it down. But, you know, I, team build. Yeah. You're like, oh, man, I, need, I like you the way you brought it around with Pittman last week. You know, or two weeks ago when you were like, hey, I, I, Pittman is my guy here. You just got stuck with him in the fifth or whatever we said it was. Like a good stuck. It's stuck in a good way. You're like, hey, I got Pittman because I got these other three running backs. Yeah. You, you're like, hey, I, I, you felt the need to get a running a wide receiver. It would have been the first one on your team. And Pittman gave you the chance for that prototypical elite number one receiver if he grows into it. He obviously had a great breakout year, year for a year two receiver. You know, so it lines up sometimes. Where, you know, in that draft we did, Foreman said – I need a wide receiver right now, and Pittman fits perfect. Yep, yep. But, you know, if somebody else had been on the board, you might have been, I need a wide receiver, but look at this quarterback value. Yeah. You know, so right. that's like – and th- and this is the first time you said – I didn't know which team was yours, Casey. You know, you got – Six. Cousins and – Cousins as your third quarterback, which is the scenario I was trying to draw out last week um, of a – you know, or two weeks ago is about my cousins are better – or it used to a couple uh, Andy I, I mentioned Andy Dalton are better and he blew off the map so the next year when I was re- mentioning that scenario I was like Stafford are better somebody who's definitely a starter in the league is my third Casey pulled it off here and uh, this one and anchors a couple of young guys that may not actually even be startable every week um, yeah just I mean it was it was you know if, just using my team as an example for the 
topic of conversation. Like I, I really probably wasn't. I, I obviously was sort of looking at running backs there because I, I picked Taylor there at one six, and we're in the seventh round, and I need another one. Yeah. Um, but we're I guess in that in this case we read off the sixth round and I, I picked Schultz there because I felt like it was either him or Goddard as as the last tight end that I really wanted in premium or I would have punted uh, for a bit. You know, I, Fet, Lenny and Connor are guys that just really don't even. I, I guess at some point they would, but like, I, and I don't know that the seventh round is that line. I didn't have to make that decision because they got drafted, uh, you know, right before I picked. Uh, but they're not guys that I'm looking at, even though I am needy at that position at that point because of the way this draft unfolded for me. So I guess what I'm saying is, is no, I don't, I'm not letting it dictate that I do need that position. I'm going to be on the lookout for the value to be there. Like, um, you know, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, and Miles Sanders, if they're going to keep falling, like they necessarily haven't had the seasons that Connor or Fournette, Fournette have had, but they have the talent to possibly do so and a longer and, timeline right. to achieve. And they're it. younger. Yeah, yeah, they're three to four years younger. I like that. Can I cut you off real yeah, quick? Yeah, go ahead. Connor went before your cousins. Right. But if Connor was on the board, there's you're... no way. I mean, I was, I was pretty much like, again, we kind of talked about it last week. Like, I ended up picking cousins in this. I think around the same area last time. Or you thought you thought about it. You wanted to, and right. I think you just maybe got him in the eighth. Maybe, maybe I got him in the eighth, yeah, or something yeah. along those lines. But the reason taking cousins there is just because of how that team a little bit played out, and you got Fields and Lawrence. You're not sure if either one of those right. guys are going to be startable every week, and maybe uh, you know cousins can anchor me, and then yep. if you know if one of the, if both, hopefully what you're you know really hoping for is both of those guys exceed cousins from a fantasy standpoint i know a lot of people are thinking well that'll be easy but i mean at the end of the day cousins is a pretty decent actually super flex mm-hmm. starter for you yeah i think um, i, I a think nice anchor i think with this build you're hoping that lawrence and fields pop and then you right. can move cousins for a running back exactly that's yep. kind of, that's what i was g- driving at is eventually you know i do take another quarterback and i probably would have probably got grabbed another quarterback it kind of played out a little funky and not how i thought it would quarterback wise a little later but some teams just punted on quarterbacks so the later quarterbacks got jammed up there a little bit uh but um that that was kind of the thought process is if that if you do need you know you talk about it and, and i'm sure you know we will at some point it's like quarterbacks as a, as a nice form of currency in super flex to be able to make moves yeah. and, and start trade talks. And, you know, while maybe Kirk cousins, isn't the guy that I end up being able to trade because frankly, nobody respects Kirk cousins. Like Justin Fields could be a guy that, you know, by week six, somebody may be interested in, in oh, Justin 100%. Fields so we can uh, make that swap. Well, those two guys being beside each other, cousins and Connor, like that's the perfect example right here. Like what in season, there's no chance you can give Connor and get Cousins off somebody's team. Not, not even that, close. Those guys right there, they're one pick a, pick apart. They're one pick apart. And for any you know normal league, Cousins is not anywhere as close to valuable as Connor. But you bring in Superflex, and you cannot give Connor and get Cousins because Cousins, Cousins is going to be in somebody's starting lineup. And just like you said, if Lawrence and Fields are killing it, now Cousins is on – Casey's bench and he's like that's that that's is that's scenario, currency right? that's currency you you yeah. can do something with do, that do you think it's it's feasible to draft an entire team with that kind of mindset of saying like because at some at some point you're taking players because you need them to score points um but kind of what you just said of saying like there's no way that you'd be able to do this for that in season so does that like automatically take players off the board for you well it all it is even though, like in this case, I guess it's not the worst example. Even though I, I don't Every, think any of us really want Connor or Fournette in this range, like we could probably find a better name that would be more interesting for you personally. But of course, uh, well, like you know, I mean, pretty much every startup, the first three rounds are going to look the same. The names are going to be jumbled up, but they're going to be about the same names. And then that fourth through seventh, those names usually flip flop back and forth all over the place. Where you know we've said it a million times that year that Sterling Shepard was a rookie in FFPC. We did two drafts back to back within two months of each other, and in one draft, nothing happened for Sterling Shepard or the Giants, but he went like four rounds apart mm-hmm. just because the perceived value with that that draft. So things can happen all over the place. It's I do try to, uh, you know, I try to evolve. I try to learn a little bit every year. So, like, if I'm going to start up right this second, I would be thinking 
the, you know, that exact scenario, I'd be thinking I can't take Connor here because Kirk Cousins is on the board, and when the season starts, Kirk Cousins is going to be worth way more. I have, I will be thinking like that pretty much with every pick, but at the same time, I touched on this last time, and you can't necessarily count on making those trades. You can assume you can make them, but you don't want to count on them. I mean, I would have no problem being – Having way too, if I have any, if I have too many of one position, and, and if it's, so, I want to be quarterback, because yeah. you're not, you're not going to be stuck with quarterbacks. If you overdraft running backs, if you, if if they're healthy, you may go to the championship. If they, you picked a couple busts, whatever, you know, you get some people hurt, you you might have some bad luck. Like if you have a bunch of quarterbacks on your team and a super flex, you'll figure it out. Yeah, I'd rather have, I'd rather get stuck, I'd rather get stuck getting eighty five cents of the dollar for Cousins than get stuck with Connor. Exactly. Because if Connor busts, he's going to be literally worth a third round pick. I mean, even if he doesn't bust. Yeah. Because of like we started the conversation off with, he's 27 now, and that's what's driving him to the seventh round. He's 28 on the next go. Well, shit, he was like, 26 he's, last year. He's before. 28 as soon as the season starts, basically. Yeah. He looked washed ish. For sure. People were give, coming out of the, off the Steelers. People right. that weren't a Connor, if you weren't on the Connor train to begin with, he was dead coming into last year. He was a 10th, 11th round there startup was pick. One million stats to tell you how bad. How bad he was. wanted to tell you how bad. So Connor he goes was. to Zona, looks healthy again, kill, plays his butt off, catches passes, yeah. and has a ridiculous and, touchdown and efficiency. And crushes number. it. And now all of a sudden he's back in the seventh round. But I can't go any higher now because he only gets older. And, you know. He, right. It's not personal with Lenny and Connor. It's that the fact of. Which is kind of what I was starting to get into is like almost the psychology of the draft of saying those guys that when it starts are going to be now 28, 28 year old running, 28 year old receivers holding some water, 28 year old running backs, uh, you know, starting to uh, especially guys who, you know, aren't the biggest consensus guys to begin with. Right. uh, Start to be a little weird. All right. So any problems with anybody in the sixth round here? No problems. I mean, I think based on who's on the board, I uh, Let's see which direction that draft was going. It, it was, was going uh, this way for Mac Jones. Uh, the team goes against Mac Jones. I, I mean, that's probably as soon as I've seen him taken. Just based on you know who's still out there, you made a you made a good effort to say, hey, I'm grabbing Mac Jones instead of waiting around and saying, hey, I'm taking Mac Jones because he's here. And they went out and got him. Um, you know, in Bill Belichick, we trust maybe is that team's mindset, and he's gonna. <laughs> I don't think there's any chance he's not going to make it. You know, Mac Jones may be the new Andy Dalton or better for everybody's. You know, for the next five years, Mac Jones is going to be. There's so many question be, marks yeah. over he there. He could be Kirk Cousins. Yeah. He certainly. Yeah. 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 But he absolutely. Could I don't be. think any of us expect him. I mean, he he has the body type to be Tom Brady, but I don't think anybody <laughs> expects him to elevate like that. You know, no. not that he couldn't. It's definitely not impossible. We would have well, all in, in, in maybe a normal scenario of where the Patriots have been over time, but where we're at right now with the Patriots, it's they don't even have a real offensive coordinator on that roster right now. Like <laughs> the guy who's been the stalwart of, of cooking up this scheme with Tommy is now gone. And yeah. who is who is taking that place? It's Matt Patricia. That's kind of maybe I heard what's he happening. was the leader in the clubhouse, like, yeah. And, and, and or the leader. you know, who did you really bring in? I mean, I don't hate Devontae Parker if he's healthy, but you know, Thornton was your it was your big rookie bring in and, and five hundred running backs. Like yeah. you know, I just yeah. I don't know. I don't. I'm pretty apprehensive about what the offense in general will look. It's not a Mac Jones indictment. I think he is. You know, could be a and and a, people view it as saying he's Kirk Cousins, but I mean, I that's love, not a slight to him. That's that's he's right. he's a QB fifteen year over year, and there's and in a, and in a super flex or two quarterback league, you'll take that every yeah. day. Yeah, I just don't I don't like that for a young guy, uh, at being you know having just the continuity kind of swept out from under his legs from the guy who's been the guy over there for so long that gets so much credit that was always at the top of every list of the off season of who's the hot coach. Sure. Um, I mean, I think from a wins and losses standpoint is we're talking fantasy over here, but I think what I think Belichick and the Patriots and Mac, the way they're going to draw it, like you said, with all the running backs, the I think the way they're going to play that they still got those tight ends that they signed last year. Right. I think the way they play this is, is going to be just fine. Fantasy. It doesn't it's necessarily, be it doesn't, scary, though. doesn't scream ceiling for Mac Jones. Yeah. No, no. Right. All right. We You're can betting all... on Mac Jones's floor instead of a ceiling. There. Exactly. Well said. Well said. Yeah. 
All right, so seven. And I don't want to be taking floor quarterbacks in the sixth round as my number two. Is basically what that kind of no, comes back right. to. And, and we talk about landscape can change in a hurry. Um, sure, but can I? I was really considering. I was really thinking hard about Williams and Burks at the six, at the for at the first pick of the sixth round because that asthma stuff with Burks is really is that's, is scaring me a bit. Yeah, I, th- I think that's... unless something changed, which I might not have heard about medically, like he. He had the asthma playing in college. Like, okay. what is that going to... You know, yeah. in my, my, I, I just thought it wasn't talked about. It seems like a treatable situation. Sure. Of, it's just... it's just He's missing camp already because of yeah. it. And I mean, it, it could be it could be something, but it's probably nothing. It's probably nothing, it's but probably, it's... it's it's just a, it's just something for the old ticker file. I think it's I think especially it's in a startup where you have options. Yeah, sure. I think you have all the options, not just you might be at one five and the other guys are gone, and you're like, well, I got to take Burks here, asthma yeah. or not. I'm yeah. not dialed into the beat of what the hell's going on every single day there, but I mean, it seems like you showed up maybe slightly out of shape, and the first day, three week of being a professional athlete could be overwhelming, and you already have these sort of problems where. You know, it exacerbates yeah. things a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I mean, it, it also could scream last year with Jamar Chase being sure. able to, unable to catch the ball, and then 100%. has one of the greatest rookie seasons ever for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, seven uh, one Bateman, Lenny seven two uh, Olave, Goddard, Connor Cousins, Williams, Mike Williams, uh, Tommy, Kenny Pickett, Zach Wilson, Elijah Moore, uh, and Keenan Allen to wrap up the seventh. Uh, any any big takeaways there mike uh, williams is maybe a little bit of somebody who wouldn't have been on my radar there but maybe uh, mike williams feels like thing. he feels like a good pick and a bad pick at the same yeah. time like he if, if you you know i'm not to take it back to what i said before but if you could turn injuries off mike williams that's an incredible pick yeah you know but he he just he plays like he's you know Superman and he's which, huge and which Mike Williams are you getting right you getting the str- the beginning well, stretch of last year of Mike Williams uh, or the end I mean he picked they the picked yeah. back up he had that yeah. lull in the yeah. middle which you know but this is also the Mike Williams we've never seen Mike Williams with you know the first part of his Third career Herbert. Herbert Herbert wasn't there exactly so never. you would imagine the continued ascension of Herbert now you have Mike Williams who was as healthy last year as maybe we've ever seen him does that sticker he just got paid the team likes him enough to pay him he's only 27 so like right there at 7-7 seven, seven, you got the number one obviously Keenan's the number one but he's the inside guy and he's super old at this point when he's probably going to catch 140 balls but <laughs> Mike Williams the touchdown make maker Big playmaker. Justin's got a rocket arm. Herbert, it, I don't even think from college on hasn't had a coordinator two years in a row. I think this is the first time we'll have that. Yeah. Um, so there's a little little continuity for him. But just the psychology of Mike Williams, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore, much safer asset. Mike Williams, if he's crushing maybe a, I, a I know, think top-tier would start. Argue, I think some people could argue that, that you're, you know, Quarterback wise, you're really unsure about the asset there, which is oh, not even yeah, yeah, for but sure. I'd rather have Sutton over Mike Williams ten times out of ten. Cortland, good point. Yeah, me yep. too. I'm agreed. I'm just like quarterback or no quarterback. That's what like starting off week one. I'm plugging Mike Williams, no doubt. So, but as a as an asset, you know, you just somebody selected Mike Williams seven seven. Elijah Moore's on the board. Cutland, Cortland Sutton's on the board. Like I can't do that. Yeah. Even though Mike Williams would make me a better team. For week one matchup, I think that's why my I, projected points will be higher, I and I would assume. That's why I said, you know, right. is that the bad? Is that a bad pick? Because I'm not really necessarily thinking about him. But me and Jason were kind of talking and reviewing ADP last night. So the fact that he's not on my radar and maybe is a little bit of a reach there potentially, is that make him a guy that could have some trade value as far as going to acquire Mike Williams? Like sometimes you have a blind spot. Yeah, um, you remember we got Mike Williams last year for a third because nobody sure. liked him. Wow, for sure, that's yeah. a steal. Yeah, we put him on our team. It, it was. We it said is we'll try FNPC, it. So the we'll rosters are a little smaller, okay. so things people get a little squirrely because uh, yeah. you're only holding twenty. Yeah, but still, I said we'll sign up for it. We put him in our for starting a third. Lineup. Yeah, that happens all the time in those leagues because people they don't know who to cut, and Mike Mike Williams isn't no longer wasn't the sexy player and is hurt and clogs up your roster in those kind of situations so it was for me and big color perennially doing yeah. those 
going doing that like hey sure third dude, fourth fifths for for guys like dude sent out a dude sent out an email and he had a couple names on there and he was like this player for a third this player for a fourth this player for a fifth or whatever he's just trying to get paid instead of cutting a guy i didn't even call casey i just i called casey 15 minutes later and i was like we got mike williams for a third boom and he was like for real and because it was like one of those things that email goes out, dude sends out a message to the league, I'm jumping on it. Yeah, for well, sure. What would you – I mean, you're not giving up a first for Mike Williams. No, right? not no. absolutely not. But I'd probably give it. up in late second, maybe I, a mid-second. I'll give a two for it, especially if I feel like I'm a contender. Yeah, exactly. You got a problem with Tom there? No. Mm-mm. I mean, I just feel like I feel like he's going to be so solid. I still – I think he's got two more years. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say because I didn't get it in when we did this a couple weeks ago when we, and we just kind of went right past Brady. We were talking more about that dude's team build because mm-hmm. of the way I think he had pits and some running backs or whatever. But, like, you talk about renting a player at the top of the draft, an old wide receiver, about being great for two or three years. Why not put the quarterback in there, the guy who just led the league in passing and yards and touchdowns and everything else? And he's, you know, yeah. It, it doesn't look like he's any t- any sign of, sign of slowing down. Give me give me that guy for two. Maybe he retires after a year and you only got a year of greatness. But I mean, I'll I'll flip that coin. I'll take him. I'll take him in the seventh round. I yeah. wouldn't want to, but I would. I would do it. I wouldn't. I mean, he's solid there as as a third QB, but I think he. I'd rather have him as like my second QB on like a team i mean i mean yeah he's great there's your third qb but this guy again going with the team build here he's took rogers another old qb two rounds ahead of him i mean if that pans out he's got one he's got possibly no quarterbacks in two years if hurts doesn't pan right. out i you know about team build i could take that team right there and go i you know for at, at, there's asset not- wise i would probably swap out me a mike evans but if you could tell me i got tom brady as my third quarterback in the seventh Fan. I'm rolling. I probably wouldn't buy the Aaron Rodgers and the Tom Brady back to back. I probably would have yeah. passed on the Aaron Rodgers situation. But just if you're feeling Tom pass on Rodgers. Yep. Yeah. Get, yeah. 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 And and yeah. maybe this Rodgers plays five more years in the elite level. For but, sure. You know, I, I give me the two round discount. And I'll take Brady. And is that anybody buying Zach Wilson? I know you're probably you, you're not a Zach Wilson guy, right? He's he, he's fine. It's just there's just. I don't know. I just don't trust. I, I hate to say it, I just don't trust the Jets. I think. I think. Fair. Doug, I think Douglas is trying to do something good. I just don't know how I feel about that. That unproven coaching staff. They've given him a chance. I think. Yeah, yeah for sure. So. He's going to get all the chances. So at least for this. At least this year. Um, Some intangibles there of 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 talent, arm talent, but uh, we just don't. We don't yeah, but know. what's going on between the ears? That's right. what's more important to me. Right. I mean, you have all arm, arm talent in the world, but 100%. if you, if you, if you can't mentally read the defenses, then you're shit out of luck. Yeah. All right, let's keep it rolling. Also, um, I took Keen in there because I took I went I wanted someone safe in case I took Burks and then my next pick in the eighth round. I just went super safe. Yes. Yeah. If push comes to shove, he's a he's my wide receiver too for the next two years, and I just figure out the wide receiver three spot so oh. again i was looking at team build there more than just probably a little early for keenan but i felt like as a safe wide receiver two for the next two years i was set yeah he's you're, just you're he's just, pl- I'm just plug plugging in my lineup yeah yep. not worry about it yep so then it's watson sutton cooper mitchell dylan ryan uh mooney st brown friar Muth, sanders edwards alaire and alan robinson you uh, see that four three penn state guys and four picks i lo- <laughs> you love to see that um you kind of touched on Mitchell and Dylan, so that, that that like in that spot right there, like and then Sanders and and Elaire. Um, if I on a team like mine, um, I would have definitely been looking at Mitchell and and Dylan coming back that way for looking at running backs. Like I'm probably gonna pass on Lenny and Connor, even though their their overall threshold for where they could finish is probably better than definitely better than Dylan's and and I guess you have to say Mitchell uh but you feel better <laughs> that you got years uh with those two guys and those two guys have RB1 potential in their you know yeah builds and physicality and and uh athleticism and team uh so those would be guys that I'd be more looking at there. And I, I, I for me personally, was certainly looking at Clyde edwards Zilaire, and I was hoping that I could sneak him into the next round. Uh, but, you know, what are your thoughts on kind of running backs in this in this next area here? Yeah, I think, I mean, sand, I mean, 
Sanders is intriguing. You got a run first offense there, and he played well. He played better down the stretch, but broke the they, hand, they, and then that yeah, was a bummer. They keep bringing in guys there, so right. it just kind of makes you worried about how much sure. touches he's going to get. Same thing with Edwards Elaire. You don't know what's going on there. He he can't score. He can't score in goal to go situations. Um, Dylan, you're just not sure what his volume's going to look like week to week. If Jones gets hurt, he's a He's an every week RB one probably, mm-hmm. and with Mitchell, it's the same thing there. They're going to ride the hot hand. It sounds like TDP is going to get. It sounds like TDP is going to get some run there. They've got some other guys there as well too. Um, I think Mitchell's a great play for best ball. As for someone I'm setting my lineup with, I'm not really feeling great about putting my flex spot week to week. I think in the eighth round, looking for a running back to plug, you could do a lot worse. Yeah. No, and that's why I think that that's probably where I'm staying away from running backs. I'm taking my running backs early because I feel like in this area you're just in a dead zone of just older guys and then some middle aged guys with maybe with a little bit of little bit of post hype sleeper appeal on them. And I'm just I'd rather be taking the younger. I'd rather take the shot on Christian Watson who could be a stud than taking a shot on than taking the shot on Elijah Mitchell, who yeah. I don't think is bad, but I just don't know what is – I just – the upside there is a bit capped with me because of the 49ers running back situation. I, I, I would like to assume that he has, you know, carved out a, a enough of a role to be a weekly starter, but it's probably not an RB1 starter. There's the upside of RB1 startability, but I think he's got nice RB2, uh, you know, what he just carved out from last season in there. And I think the Niners are going to run the, the shit out of the ball. And I mean, you know, it's, it's Jeff Wilson who came back last year and, you know, another guy can't stay healthy, bought some shares of, and, you know, just for cheap and Took did, a shot. didn't look right. And didn't, wasn't, wasn't healthy. Hasty's a guy undrafted who we thought was going to be the pass catcher. And, you know, he, he got in there and got out and sermon was the guy that everybody loved. And, Ugh. you know, TDP, I guess, is really the only guy for me that necessarily concerns me from taking anything away from him. But I, I think, and, and they're they're a bit different players, um, so I, I feel okay about. Like I was a big proponent of selling Mitchell for top value. I, I, he's leveled out a little bit here for me, where I feel decent about taking him. And AJ Dillon um, is, you know, I feel like. There's going to be plenty of room for those two backs to coexist in that offense, which isn't unlike a Niners offense. Yeah. Um, and whereas, you know, you lost your primary target and in, in that Aaron Jones can maybe slide in there and take some of that, you know, passing work and, and Dylan can kind of, you know, be a, a little bit change of pace guy who looked pretty good in spots last year um, and, and will, I think, continue to get better. So for me... Um, I've actually probably switched a little bit if for running backs, which I would typically be a little bit more of, I want to get my running backs early, but now I'm probably only getting the running backs early if it makes sense. Didn't work out for me in this draft. I wanted to take Saquon Barkley where I took Trevor Lawrence. I just didn't have a quarterback at that point. Yeah. I felt like that was, was kind of the move for me. Um, and if that was the case, then, you know, of course I wouldn't be searching for a running back there, but uh, was definitely looking at Mitchell and Dylan at that point and was definitely looking at Sanders and Alaire, hoping one of them would make it back to me. Uh, and they did not. What are your, so you seem like you're maybe a little out on Edwards Alaire. I wouldn't say I'm out. I'm just, he just, I don't know if he's going to figure it out. I think people got really into Edwards Alaire when he was taken on the end of the first round and he shot at people's because of draft capital and he just hasn't seemed to, I think Edwards Alaire would have been, would have been people would seeing him differently if he would have went as the RB4, RB5, as a lot of people had him pre-draft instead of going as the RB1. I mean, how silly does the do the Chiefs look after passing on Taylor Taylor for right. Edwards Alaire? Right. Does any none of the off-season stories of Edwards Alaire having the whatever he had going on in the last off-season and dropping a ton yeah, of weight? I saw that. Being yeah, able to, yeah. I mean, it's, it certainly helps make the case for why his season wasn't great this past year. And I, think, I, I would argue that the times that he has been on the field, he's been a, he's been pretty pretty decent looking, but it's just being able to stay on that field. And then you exactly. have had those times where you you know you've had nationally televised games where he had two or three attempts from the goal line and it didn't convert. So narratives begin to be built. But I you know I've always thought he was a really good tackle breaker and yeah we haven't even seen the pass catching, no i think he can break tackles uh, fine i just don't know how he gets of, in the end zone right yeah i mean 
at at that at the, at the eighth and ninth round is when I would be willing to start taking stabs on on for sure for sure I'm just I would rather have my run I'd rather be set at running back there and trying to take my trying to take my more of my draft more of my yeah. auto picks on wide receivers and I, I think because I've been mocking this way a lot throughout this since we just kind of jumped back in and these last five six mocks starting to get a handle on everything I've been kind of building my team this way and being on the lookout for running backs which is why this conversation right here intrigues me a little bit what are your thoughts big co i love 8 11 clyde edwards i I really do I, I think i can get down with what matt's saying about i mean last week i was taking making it like right here it's gonna be hard this late in the draft like a juju for me i mentioned him last time i was here i think it has huge value for the chiefs wide receiver right but i think like clyde edwards at 8 11 is plenty good value for me to give that a shot i did you know they do have rojo to take that that shot does it matter what the rest of your roster build looks like um i mean at this point he's taking edwards larry he doesn't have a wide receiver yet well yeah that's that's not not actually his team that's not my team no 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 no, i'm not talking about big i'm talking about the the person here yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have they, they have three tight ends before they have a single running back. Let's let's say you need if if the, I guess you could look at it either way, whether or not you were robust like this guy, which you know, or you were in my situation where you only had one. Yeah, you I don't play think, it. Does it make you play it any different? I mean, maybe if I had one running back and I'm like, all right, if I take Edwards here and he hits, great. If not, if I pass on him, then now I'm looking around trying to find a Cordero Patterson to plug in my lineup. It would definitely be in on my mind. I just like, especially for this team build here, for those that can see it. If you can't, he had two two quarterbacks to get started. He takes Mahomes and Stafford. Kelsey can't argue with that start. Cam Akers still good. Hawkinson, that's fun. You got two of them. Okay. Elliot Fournette and then the Clyde Edwards that we're talking about here. The Elliot Fournette back to back on the same team is like, all right, obviously I say it all the time, and this dude takes his shots at hot he got later on he goes against Hopkins, Mike Thomas, and Robert Woods. Thomas is coming back from an injury, may not ever be the same again, maybe amazing. Hopkins is suspended. So this team right here Robert could Woods quickly is coming off an injury. Coming yeah. off an injury. So this team right here could quickly lose leverage on trade deals, as in the people that would be buying older running backs to make championship runs sees this guy over here floundering who can't make it who's you know, just he's got no wide receivers to start. Yeah. If something happens with one of his quarterbacks or I mean if all those running backs are kicking butt, maybe you don't need wide receivers, that's fine. But if somebody let's say Zeke gets hurt and his quarterback don't pan out or you know something it, it just it could happen you got you've had we've all had those teams that everybody got hurt on yeah now all of a sudden you got a an aging leonard fournette and an aging zeke on the same team when you know you're not you're imbalanced and that's you know so now you have no leverage everybody knows you need to trade those old running backs so you have a little less bargaining power when you're doing the trades I, to take it back to clyde I'd, i'll take a chance on clyde whether i need a running back or not in that spot probably i didn't I think the 8-4 Elijah Mitchell. I don't think Mitchell showed you anything last year that would make you think, in my mind, that he's not worth that spot. But, but, uh, uh, bring in Trey Lance. Bring in more running game efficiency. It's not about the quarterback not being able to throw the ball um, like a seasoned veteran that would change the way the defense plays because he can throw it 90 yards. So at least at a minimum, you got to stay back a little bit safety-wise. Even if you know they're running it, you can't just come up because he can throw it so far. Yeah, so, I, saw, I saw a stat. The I forget who it was. I don't know if it was Barfield or uh, the um, Kevin Clark or somebody was saying, you know, X, a very high percentage of Jimmy G's pass went 10 yards or under, mm-hmm. and a very high percentage of Trey Lance's uh, passes went over the the uh, 10 yards or yeah. more for obviously limited uh, threshold there. Sure, but to your, to your point, size. basically, was kind of what I was Not that he's going to be there. airing it out all the time, right. but the ability to throw at 80 has to at least give you that extra, hey, don't come up, you can't come up. So I, I just feel like the Elijah Mitchell pick at 8-4, yeah, you know, I just kind of sat back. You guys were having a really good conversation. I want to butt in there. I feel like Elijah Mitchell, for what it could be, that would be a great, hey, I got a, I got some quarterbacks and a tight end and a couple wide receivers I like already on my team to begin with. Now I'm looking around. I got a potential. Even if he is getting RB2 attempts and RB2 touches, the RB1 efficiency could be there on that team for the Niners. He could be getting – like <laughs> He might not get 295 touches 
And he definitely is not going to catch 50 passes. So I, that's why he's not in the fifth round. And if Kyle Shanahan came out and said we're going to ride him like a bell cow all year till his cleats fall off, he'd be in the fourth round. So second round, I'll take so, him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so like I'll take the chance. Like if even if he's they're riding a the hot hand, we've seen Elijah Mitchell when a Mitchell would get hurt and he would miss or he would go out, and then when he was healthy, he'd come back in and, and Kyle put him back in in the front. Like so, whatever he's got going on, he made Kyle happy last year. I'm down to take him at eight and find my way into TDP later on in the draft. I'm happy to come away with both of those guys on the same team because I didn't pay much. I took a – in a 12th, 13th round, you're not – to me, you're TDP's not giving up. You're not 12. 12, 12 yeah. 9. You're not giving up. There's basically the only opportunity – at 12, 9 at TDP, the only opportunity cost I can find on the board is just taking like – you're missing out on taking a chance. You, you might miss Daniel Jones or somebody like that in a quarterback role that could come to life and be worth something. All those wide receivers are replaceable. Sure, somebody's going to be awesome. Russell Gage might catch 100 balls. But you know what I mean? Like you're at, in the 13th round, you shoot your shot. And that pairs up with the eighth round running back that I took. Probably the two best running backs on the best running team in the NFL with a quarterback that's going to keep everybody on the defense honest with his ability to run the ball. I just feel like, like Casey said, I mean, the running game for the Niners is going to be – advanced to a level we may have never we may have never even seen before yet i like the eighth round of elijah mitchell i just i keep going back to the upside but i guess in the eighth round i mean what what really upside i mean if you can grab a if you can grab a rb2 flex play then i guess it's worth it in the eighth round rather than taking a shot on a wide receiver who's played two years at North Dakota State. I, I, well, well, it's not that. It's just that there's other wide receivers. I mean, the, you know, it's like that. Yeah. I can, even, I can take that Mitchell, and I can come back in the next round. This team took a Pickens. Like sure. A, you know, from a team. Yep. The best the best wide receiver drafting team in the league took a, a, t- took the, the chance on this year's, oh, he's the what best. What if, what if. He's yeah. the best talent, but we don't know how it's going to work out. You know, like Jake Casey said last week, or, you know, he's like – well, he didn't actually do anything wrong. We just thought he might or something. Whatever happened right. with Pickens, it hadn't happened yet, but everybody says he's a loose cannon or whatever. It, um, the one dude said he's the best wide receiver in the draft. Yeah. Um, Gil, uh, Gil Brand or whatever, some, you know, one of those respected enough, dudes. Yeah, I don't know. Gil Brand and respect might, might not be might in not the same been, sense. Might not so. be, okay, he's, fair he's enough. He's, somebody he's, he's got yeah, a little no, loose yeah. in his old age, but yeah. he was very respected for a, a little Maybe, while. It might not have been him, but somebody in that, in that no, I get genre of – Ear to the ground in the NFL. Sure, sure. Somebody scouts say he's actually the best wide receiver prospect. Yeah, you know, excellent not, tools. Not first take. Yeah, him, you right. know. So at some point, I want to get back down to these lower level picks yeah. here and make some picks. But let's. Is there any guys throughout the rest of this draft here who you zero in on and say you like or you don't like, or like if you're building a team a certain way, you're targeting this guy. Like Melvin Gordon's a guy that kind of pops up for me. 11th round maybe fringe a little early thought I, he would hang around for a team like my build here yeah in the 12th 13th round that I could pick up and take a shot on for one or two years Melvin Gordon kind of a lower level Mike Evans just always kind of disrespected on on how good he actually is when he's getting fed and, and it was pretty good and kept uh Javante from being uh you know what he was is there is there any other guys on this list or if you're like you know the tight end targets that you're looking at or or you know is is you like a gabe davis or do you like a you know wh- likes dislikes gallops what do you any anything that you see here that you want to hone in on to talk about before we go maybe look at some guys some later round guys i don't understand how how the community as a whole keeps sleeping on jacoby myers he's gonna be the top target in new england and he's getting drafted as 13, in the, at the end of the 14. 13th round Probably. And he's going to play in what two wide receiver sets in New England? Yeah, you might not get a huge amount of passing offense, but as a fourth wide, as a fifth wide receiver in the thirteenth round, he's a guy who I can play at my wide receiver, wide receiver three spot. And I was playing him that in multiple leagues last year, and he's giving me ten, eleven, twelve points week over week because he's getting targets. I just don't yeah, understand. He gets, he's he's not sexy. He's not sexy no. because he wasn't scoring touchdowns. But he's a fantastic PPR floor. Exactly. So that's 13-12. Yeah. I like I like in that area. Let me just I'll pivot to Kenny Galladay at 14-3. Oh, yep, for sure. I consider, All day, I consider, every day, yep, every I, draft. You, I'm not leaving yep, a draft without yep, Kenny Galladay. Okay. I considered so, Galladay, but I went with Pierce for the upside. Galladay's okay. there. Galladay's a must-have at the price, at the cost. 160 for Myers in Superflex ADP. Uh, wide receiver 61. So what's that? You said what? One, 160? 
for DLS. Uh, twelve 80. times twelve is one forty four, and then yeah. you get another sixteen. So yeah, that's about, right on. Yeah, yeah. That's right on. Okay. Yeah, um, but still, like exactly, I'm taking them there ten times out of ten. I just saw somebody that I had. To I have. mean, Russell Gage is coming. Russell Gage could be hot in the streets with Godwin looking to start the season on the pup. Right, Godwin. Um, I guess. Oh, Russell Gage. Won't, he'll be he, he'll be three rounds higher than this by the yeah. time we get to if, if, maybe if even you get more by the time up, if you get a start up right now. It's been a little negative on Gage. Yeah. Because I don't know if it's a injury or Tom saying he's not like he he really wants. Him, needs him to be where he is yeah. and he doesn't, isn't maybe quite where he wants him to and be. And now with them, with Gronk retiring for however long, I mean, you could say the same thing about Marlon Mack. I mean, Marlon Mack, it sounds like the Texans are going to try and lean on him a bit. I mean, right. he could be a that was, huge that was, value. That was 15th round Marlon Mack. I mean, a guy that we've seen some juice out of, you get a, a decent amount of time to recover from that injury. Um, and, you know, it's Damian Pierce is your biggest competition right now, a rookie. Um, yeah, you can't can't be upset with 15th round Marlon I'm, I'm, Mack. I'm, I'm looking for running backs. I'm hurting. I'm hunting. I'm going to um, go back up a little less bargain bin. I didn't actually take Chuba there. That was an auto pick. And the other draft that I had queued up, I replaced it with Gus Johnson or uh, Gus Edwards. Um, because if I had to make another running back pick, that would probably be the, the guy that I would pick to yeah. have a better chance. Not that I dislike Chuba Hubbard by any means, but the fact that they brought in uh, – Foreman, Dante Foreman. You my know. cousin, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just rattles my cage a little bit there and what, what might be going on there. Go, go ahead, Bico. Go back up a little bit more pricey, but still, for me, I don't really understand how we he fell, basically got his ADP doubled. Chase Claypool at 9-11. That, Seems like dude's 23 years old. He's, he's a top three wide receiver in the league, according to him. He's a monster. He's, I mean, he's absolutely huge. I mean, 6'4", 240. Um, but obviously they got quarterback situation and think, you know, he, he's kind of a knucklehead too. Sure. But, uh, I'll, I'll at nine 11, give me him, give me him all day. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's see. Nine 11. Easy there. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Um, yeah. Even, yeah. even Hunter Renfro in the 11th round. I mean, Gabe Davis. Talk about Claypool. PPR floor, Hunter Renfro. I yeah. mean, yeah, he's probably the third banana there, but, I mean, that should be a team that's going to throw the ball around with McDaniels. The temps are going to be way up. Yeah, I mean, he should see consistently seven, eight targets a week. He turns easy five targets too. five or six of those into easy 50, targets. 60 yards. He's the easiest matchup. Yep. He, he was making the targets for his quarterback easy last year without Devontae Adams drawing the coverage. Yeah. You know, so now I, I completely agree. Obviously, if Devontae Adams isn't there, you think I, I would hope to think that Renfro would be in the eighth round just based on PPR floor. Yeah. Um, and relatively ceiling, too, because the way he does that, you can't get in and out of a TV uh, game on the Raiders without them showing you that triple break move that Renfro likes to run. Mm -hmm. But he really was getting looked at in the red zone by Carr, and he's looking for him in the in the end zone. To, yeah. To, hey, I'm not. You didn't do the Z route. You actually made it. A, you doubled it or something. Instead of breaking in and then going out, you break in. You break out and then you came back in. And it's like they just made so much over it for the last, you know, weeks twelve through fourteen. I just felt like every time the Raiders were on TV, they were just like showing that over and over again. But it kept working, and Carr kept throwing it to him. So I like that. Ren Renfro mid eleventh is Gabe like, Davis or Claypool. I mean, I'm taking the quarter. I'm taking the quarterback. I mean, Gabe Davis. I get it. They're right there side by side. I mean, I I can't. I said it when it happened. When Clay, Claypool scored that four or five touchdowns, I was like, well, he'll never stay, you know, score then more Davis than that. Davis just scored four or five touchdowns. Right. Yeah. You're right. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I, I'll, I'll go back to, I'll go back to Claypool just going back to the 6'4, 235 ability to actually get out there and play wide receiver slash tight end. I like Gabe Davis, and obviously the quarterbacks are not even comparable. The situation is not comparable, but I'll go back to Claypool there. Gabe Davis is in that six six two six three two ten range, so you're not quite on the Claypool level. Would you, Gabe Davis, Claypool, or Tony? I'm st I'm, I'm. I don't going. think I don't think Tony's in the I don't think Tony's even in the same tiers. Not I don't I think he's at least a tier away, if not two. I think Tony, from what I saw in a very brief amount of time on the field is 100 percent in their tier it's just whether or not mentally he can he can put it together because i think if if he does he's he's gonna mark his claim as one of the best fucking receivers in the league yeah i think i think i 
I think that, that what we saw in that very short amount of time. Yeah, was he was killing. I remember. Ridiculous. I remember watching the Rams game. He was tearing him. He was tearing him up on the first drive. To be could, fair, Claypool, Gabe Davis, both had those shining moments. It just looked so much different with Tony. Yeah, I think I think you're kind of getting. You're gonna see what happens with Dable there, and see people could be like, okay, Tony could move up. I mean, if Tony plays to his potential, he's moving up three, four rounds easily. He's moving sure, up. I mentioned it earlier. I, I think Davis is the safest. I think Tony has the ability to look. There's like, so the, much like less competition the, there. Too. Tony like, will be the Claypool's, shiniest object. Claypool just had uh, Pickens drafted. Sure. He has uh, sure. Deontay Johnson there. Um, they have Fryermuth there. They have uh, missing somebody. Um, they got a running back who can catch balls. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Najee. Uh, and they, they let go of Washington, I guess. Washington. And yeah, then, you know, and on Gabe Davis's side, you have Diggs. I mean, they did sound Crowder for a year, and you say what you want, but healthy Crowder. Crowder can ball. Yeah. Strong in the slot. Sure. Um, you know, they got Knox there. and um, Knox. And, I mean, Knox, I kind of want to talk about that a little bit in the 9-2. Like, apparently, I'm probably yeah. dropping Knox a little bit because O.J. Howard, apparently I think, he's is right kind of behind him. They said he's looked like che- absolute butt cheeks in training camp Who? so far. O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard? Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, he's good. been getting some bad reviews out of out of Howard. Buffalo. And whereas Tony, it's basically Galladay and who else? If Shepard can stay healthy, Shepard, but he's twenty nine coming off Darius, of Achilles. Darius Slayton, yeah. Slayton, I mean, yeah. I had my fun in the summer. With I don't. I don't think did uh, <laughs> did the Giants draft any? Oh, the draft Wandale. 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 I mean, yeah, Wandale, Wandale. Sure, different different style. Of, yeah, know. I don't know. They're that much different. I mean, they're yeah, they're, they're a little different. I mean, Wandale plays a little stronger than Tony usage. does, but yeah. Yeah, um, you know, and then as far as quarterback super flex wise, I like the, all the Mayfield, Golf, Daniel Jones stabs that you can take. If and I would have told I've you been stabbing on Davis Mills a bunch, if I would have told you a year ago, how high do you think it would have been if if I would have told you Jared Goff was going to go pick ahead of Baker Mayfield? Right. Mm. I mean, uh, I Delta told eight high. I told you to stay away from Baker a couple years ago. I'm like, nah, dude. I don't. I don't know that get it's out. necessarily Baker's fault. I didn't say it was his fault. Um, and I like the. I like picking up Baker right now. Yeah, I think. Well, it sounds yeah, like now. he's going to end up in Carolina one way or another. I got to go back to Rashad Penny at fourteen seven. Obviously, you don't have enough picks this late in the draft to get all these guys. But we're just going through some of the fun ones. Yeah. I mean, at fourteen seven, the 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 well, Seahawks had to just ship off Russell Wilson because they want to run the ball so much. Right. And Penny, all he did was absolutely tear it up down the stretch last yeah. year he that was his healthiest stretch he's been in since he came in the league five years ago but so as far as i've got to give that a try when i'm i've been kind of like i said drafting a similar way here through these five six teams i come away with penny with mac gus gainwell yep. b rob mckissick if i can uh melvin gordon all those guys are guys that just are constantly all in that same row of guys that i took penny mac i know it says chuba but gus would have been the yeah. guy if i would have got auto picked there haskins is a great pick um, too i mean if henry goes down he's seeing yeah he's seeing where's the same don trail hilliard's been good and they have don trail hilliard um, yeah so i think he's getting but he but he's disrespected but um, yeah i mean he's probably a guy who's probably going off the board here pretty quickly yeah. um and then I think Bob, Big Bobby Tanyan right there could be in line for some work. He was, oh, heck yeah. Uh, nice little late tight end stab sure, sure. there. Um, and I like the Evan Ingram uh, stabs late on tight ends. Jags ain't got nobody. And then, and then Chris, Well, they have, they have people. They're just not right. Nate. I mean, they got right. Kirk. Well, and they don't they have got, any tight ends, yeah, then, rather. Yeah. I mean, I guess Dan Arnold. I mean, some people would be putting the crown on Dan. But I think Evan Ingram, healthy, functional, yeah. uh, is, is probably going to outplay Dan Arnold. Sure. Uh, week in, week out. And they'll, um, and then they might even play more 11 personnel anyways to try and get to both tight ends on the field to right. try and help out with. I know Ingram is probably not blocking 12. much of anybody. Yeah. 12 personnel. My yep. apologies. 12 personnel. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what do you, any, any, I mean, any thoughts on Rojo? Good stab. Great stab. Okay. Great. I didn't pay anything for him. Yeah. If you could come, I mean, coming on, you're in a top three offense in the league who just lost their most explosive weapon mm-hmm. and i mean you know why not i'll tell you what i absolutely love and i wasn't sure if he's going to get drafted in all these ones that we've done to 16 rounds he usually doesn't that jarvis stab right there that could be just money in the bank at 16 5 of just the saints are kind of like what the hell's going on we lost yeah. like the longest tenured coach we got a rookie in olave who you know fine player good mm-hmm. player mm-hmm. 
We don't know what's going on with Michael Thomas. Yeah, and other than that, Kamara, Kamara's probably out for – Yeah, they said six games. Six, yeah. maybe appeals to four. Yeah. Jarvis is just Landry, Jarvis. Landry's Jarvis. Landry's got 100 and, targets looking and, staring and Winston, right in his face. Yeah. You know, I mean, that just seems like such a beautiful late stab that yep. nobody cares about. And Jarvis – nobody likes Jarvis. Hadn't liked him in a long time. Still good. Yep. Still good. Um, yep. All right, so – Let's just run through the back end of this thing as we wrap up here, and you guys can all bring up the player charts here of, of guys left um, that, that you want or would be interested in, in taking stabs on. And I'm sure it's going to end up with a stupid amount of names here because, you know, we're, we're, we're drawing names out of, uh, you know, uh, the guys that are left. Um, you know, obviously it's hard for me to necessarily – quit visca because there is i think i feel like there's a little something there yep um i like the kyron williams stab i don't know where he plays out because i haven't done a long enough draft to see where he yeah. plays out yeah but late enough I, I like that stab on a on a pass catching running back uh i know nico collins is down there um Devontae parker even i mean yeah i know that's not the most fun but i mean they they you know, Jacoby Myers was the name that you dropped, which I love that. After that, I mean, yeah. who? Who's it going to be? I mean, Hunter Henry for the Patriots? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, so obviously, you know, we're at the – Josh Palmer seventeen the third for the, for the uh, Chargers. Mm-hmm. You're calling off names from a list as we've got 16-12 finish. So we're in the 17th round, and you're looking at players – and Corey Davis. How many players are you, you know, are you drafting? If this is FFPC, it would stop at 20. Based on the league, you might be go to 22. They got some funky leagues now. They might have 22 spots. But most, if you're going to go, that we're in is probably 30. If you're going to go to 20, yeah. 20, if you're going to go to 25, you can still have some. I mean, there's four rounds left, and obviously 12 people, so still 48 people going to fall off the board before you get past 20. But yeah. like you said, Corey Davis is a, is a still a, a really good player and you're in the 17th all of these players are free yeah. okay so you're not yep. giving up anything for any of these guys but like you just called out jarvis landry so you could literally have a whole team's worth of players already and then come in here and grab players that you can literally start yeah you can put jarvis landry on your team you can grab uh Gerald uh, Everett seems like he might be slept James, on a little bit you at can, the charge. Like you're just yeah, for sure. Charges. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Austin Hooper, I mean, going oh, in there. He definitely. just got the blurb on Sleeper, so it yep. kind of sucks. Yep. But we picked him up with a couple late-round picks mm-hmm. in FFPCs. Jamison and Crowder. Crowder. You could plug Cloud. Free. You, you, Crowder could play the um, – what's his Sanders. name? Sanders. The, the Beasley. Beasley. Beasley and Sanders roll. He could get both of those. He, I mean, he's good Sanders, enough. He's healthy. If I'm Sanders, I go back and play again and chase a championship. But if Sanders isn't, I mean, Crowder, if a healthy Crowder could crush, obviously KJ Hamler. But you can keep going down the line here. Um, what do we if, think about Terrace Marshall? Is everybody just out after one year? Because I'm not. Like, no, if, I'll grab if, him. if he's if he's just going to keep falling here, like, yeah. there was. I like the tape. I like that he that he could play kind of all over and do a bunch of different things. And then we saw so much in the preseason. I just wonder kind of what went on in season to make him not be able to or did he just not get it did it was he kind of fucking up i don't really i mean understand. the quarterback play was dog shit too sure. not to mention that and i mean you know you have some good quarter but you have some good wide receiver play out of, well i guess robbie really wasn't playing all that well which you know we were big robbie guys here but oh uh, yeah coming off Terrace, the catch here the, the fact that uh Killed me. i forget what the hell the guy's name was was playing in front of Terrace marshall after the you know ridiculous preseason that Terrace had yeah um well, like this is a good example there because I was just now talking about like no matter what happens, Jamison Crowder's value is not going up, but you could literally put him in your starting lineup. Team build, you might have a bunch of dart throws everywhere, completely high upside guys mm-hmm. everywhere. You're like, let me get a Jarvis and let me get a Crowder and watch this, boys. I just I can I just filled up my flex spots with veterans who are going to get chances, and I got high upside on my bench. Yep. Well, if you're the other way around, you could take a Terrace Marshall right here, who at this point can't lose any more value. But he could literally store right back up the board if he comes out looking like he did in the preseason. It was a first round rookie pick last year. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean with a with a not with a not spectacular rookie. Yeah, he was, it was okay. I can't I'm trying to think the rookie class last year if it was. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. No, it wasn't really good. Yeah. I mean, it ended up being pretty dang good. A name, a name. You guys, I guarantee, you scrolled right by. Who is going to be the wide receiver too for his own team this year? Is Donald Peoples Jones? I don't. Yeah, that's again, not DPJ. Yeah, sure. Again, for he's sure. Just I mean, especially if. 
I mean, maybe and, David Bell probably could take that role, but I think Bell's going to be more the slot. I think I don't know if Bell's going to play the outside in the NFL. The only thing is, is it just got a lot less sexy with with, with the Watson yeah. stuff. Yes, I totally agree. But the only reason I didn't talk about both of those cats just now is because of the Watson situation. But yeah, yeah I'm, but I'm, we've 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 been a DPJ supporters for a while, and I like that. Yeah, sure. I mean, talk about an athletic freak. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like Michigan yeah. had a bunch of those guys. Yeah, I mean, even I mean, even if you want to take a shot on Hardman, I mean, who are they going to throw the ball to? I mean, I'm yeah. not a huge Hardman guy, but in the 17th round, why the hell not? I mean, Sammy Watkins and Paris Campbell down there, those could be wide receiver twos wide res- for for their team potentially. Yeah, Pierre Strong's getting some buzz playing the of course he playing is. the James White role. Boy, just good. Yep. Uh, Valus Jones. I mean, he was just a second round draft, third round draft. He was just a third round draft pick, and now he's going in the seventeenth. Said not even picked in the first sixteen rounds. Crowder stole my this year Isaiah McKenzie wave. I was going to ride. Yeah, because I know Crowder's a threat. But Isaiah McKenzie on that, if something were to happen, like I, he doesn't take this role, obviously. But every time he started last year, which was only three times, he blew up. Yeah. Uh, like if Diggs gets hurt, I don't even see Amari Rogers on here. Yeah, your 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 guy, big play Duvernay, mm-hmm. sitting right there looking you in the face. Damian talk- Williams, uh, as far as running back wise, absolutely I mean, not. No, you're out on Damian. I'm Williams? just messing with you. Oh, I just, okay, that's just my Algier love. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean he could be the, he's the RB one on a poor team. Is probably not running the ball a whole lot. What do you got, Big Co? How about a quarterback dart throw? What yeah, about what Tyler Hunt, Tyler Huntley? For sure. Came Adam, in, you, played well in Baltimore. Adam, you got to add him. Put him on yeah. the team. There, There's value there. There, He he was good enough. Yeah. Harrison Bryant. Um, yeah, I mean, Rodgers is way down there. He's 240. Mari Rodgers. Well, Daniel. Like Daniel uh, which is kind of wild to me. How is yeah. he that far down Paris there? Campbell. This could be his last shot. Yeah, I, Paris Campbell and Sammy were right next yeah. to each other. I like that. I mean, you could get you could draft Geno Smith, and he could be the starting quarterback for the Seahawks. I like that. Jacoby Brissett, another great pick. I mean, in in these super flex drafts, oh, you just got Big Co's attention. Well, if Brissett's a start, if, <laughs> if something doesn't something doesn't shake down, and Brissett's starting for eight weeks, twelve weeks or so, I mean, you just basically got a second round draft. You're going to be able to get a two for any him. Packers wide receiver. You know, if you got yep. if, and and you if you got you get that team. Who has a rookie quarterback who's not playing, or you know just put together a bad stretch of drafting here and needs a quarterback badly? You probably get a second, if not like a third and a like maybe two thirds, or you know you swap. Hey, I'll give you a three and Jacoby, and you give me your two, and now you've just made a profit from your 18th, 19th, 20th round pick. How about Cam Bray? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I mean, how early is he going now? Is, is I don't he know, getting, but I mean, I feel like you know, uh, all automatically it went to Otten. Yeah, and it seems like Bray is absolutely going to take that role. Bray could, I mean, he's always been a red zone guy, and with Jameis used to find Bray all the time. Mm-hmm. And right so, back. why can't Tom Brady do it? He will. Yeah. So let me just jump out. I mean, we can only hit so many twentieth round picks. Yeah, I'm gonna jump pretty look, late here. Let me, yeah, well, right before we end up here, let me jump right back to the AJ Dillon, Elijah Mitchell spot we were okay. in. Okay, go to go to pick eight four. So, to me, like in this round, I see like five guys I want to have. Right, I really want Cortland Sutton, Sutton before him and Russell Wilson take the field together. I really want him. Uh, I really want eighth 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 round, mid eighth round, Elijah Mitchell. Obviously, Matt Ryan screamed up this list two weeks ago. He was in the 11th round. I want, yeah. I want 11th round, round Matt Ryan. I'm not really feeling eighth round Matt Ryan. I think he's okay. I think he's going to get – I think there's going to be enough volume there where I think him and Cousins are a bit interchangeable to, to a certain extent. Yeah, but I, I feel – I mean, it's funny because if you watch a Falcons game, it seems like Matt Ryan, his arm is toast. But if you look at the stats – like he crushes that mid-range game with Calvin Ridley, like those deep digs. Yeah, you know, like he was, he just really good at a twenty-yard throw, which is hard in the NFL to make. He's good at a twenty-yard throw. He he could he couldn't get it to Julio anymore. He you know he he doesn't have that fifty-yard bomb in him, but for some reason, with even it feels like he just feels like he just can't throw it anymore. But he can dice you up at twenty yards a pop, which is a very hard throw for most quarterbacks because he's very, very intelligent. Sure, he knows sure. where to go, when to get it out. You know, so I, I feel you, like Matt Ryan. It just, I had so much Julio 
I was pulling so hard for Julio the last like two years. And just because I got him on some cheap and I traded for him and I put him on some title contenders for cheap. And I was like, I'm about to stack Julio and Matt Ryan. And Julio Julio couldn't stay healthy when he was healthy. But anyway, my point of that is bringing it back up here. Like the St. Brown sitting there, Allen Robinson at 8-12. What I'm trying to do in my draft is position myself. I want to have a couple of those picks. Yeah. So I've given up the chances in the seventh round. To move up, I want to give up my seventh round. I'm gonna go up to the sixth round, and I'm gonna move my and I'm gonna bring up something to the eighth. Right? I'll I'll trade back. I want to trade back and up, and I, you know I want to I want to open up a little gap there where I've gone. Let's say a lot of times I'll keep this for the Patreon people, but we're so far down into this, you got to be knee deep in dynasty football to see this an hour in. <laughs> so I want to have, let's say, I want to have six guys by the time we get to out of the fifth round. Okay. Okay. And now, so I might have to skip the sixth because I've got six guys already. I'm looking at the sixth round, I'm in kind of okay with that. That's what I. That's how. That's that's how I, I roll. I want to try to get six after five. So I'm a I'm a I'm a man ahead of you as far as value per se. You could have two hit two busts in there and it doesn't matter. But let's just say I got six good guys through five rounds. I'm feeling good about myself. And now I got multiple picks in the ninth, or, or in the eighth. And I can sit here and I can get the I can get Mitchell and St. Brown at the same time, or I can get Mitchell and or St. Brown and Allen Robinson, and I just put on you know I've been a around young this enough. stud. I've been around this enough to know that while those other picks are going through, you're going to be like ah that ah oh, man that guy was yeah. But <laughs> at the end of the day, like you said, it's going to be just you know just just turn it off for a second. Mm-hmm. You're Back man up. ahead. And yeah. then you get to come back and, and, and pick back rep, could, right where you are. You could pick a spot where you can gobble a little bit, you know, because I was te- like when we I, it's hard. I like I like Mitchell, but I like Dylan and I like Darnell Mooney's going to get 150 targets. Right. So and he's working out with fields, you know, same same. You, you know, obviously you can feel like that in the third round because everybody's great. But you find that sweet spot here in the eighth round where you're like, dang, I like all these guys. Not that I don't like these guys up in the sixth round or whatever, but like you know, outside of Dalton Schultz, I could be okay if I don't have any of those guys. Yep, yep. You know, for the price tag, let me trade up and then fall back, and I got my six through five, and then I got three or four picks back here somewhere, and I can just gobble a couple guys, and then you can be like, all right, I got two of the next five picks, or I got three of the next nine picks, something like that. Mm-hmm. So now you start to control the board a little bit, and you're like, all right, I can I can draft this player, and then when I get to this pick, I like these guys, I can trade back a little bit and pull this other draft pick up a little bit. Now you got, you know, now you're just playing with playing with the board a little bit. And, and you, you can continue to kind of do that in, in chunks and, of uh, throughout the draft. Yeah. You can, and obviously you can, it's not just that one time yeah. in the sixth. It's, you know, you can do that again in the – 10th and miss out on some 12th rounders and have a bunch of 10th round picks so mm-hmm. you know which is you know habitually how in a draft if we share a team that's where big the position that big co puts himself in a lot i think it's important here to really establish your tiers here because if you're sitting in a pick or two and the ross play and your tier goes maybe it's beneficial hey i'm gonna move back around and i'm gonna yeah. say hey this is where i'm at or um if you're really heavy on quarterbacks and that you see it, you already have two quarterbacks in a super flex draft and there's a quarterback run coming here, maybe it's beneficial. You, you, you can move back around or maybe you do go on in quarterbacks. I, I've seen it done masterfully where I've seen, I've seen guys take five, six quarterbacks in a startup. And then a year later, they're sitting with five or six first round picks and they have two pretty good quarterbacks still. And now they're in the catbird seat because they took that, they took that chance. But when it doesn't work out, then you're up shit's creek without a paddle. So it just that it's it's a big gamble, but maybe maybe in a maybe in a 2022 startup, maybe you're taking that risk because you can see what's on deck for 2023, 2024. But I guess you can you could probably do that every year. But it seems like I, going off as a college football fan, this is going to be great. This is going to be a good class next year. Yeah, I, I, oh for sure. Especially with quarterbacks, running backs, um, even wide receivers to a certain extent. Those are they're gonna they're gonna we're gonna have four or five quarterbacks taken in the first round next year yeah yeah well, we're gonna we're gonna bounce back on the quarterbacks here um uh to, to to kind of put a bow on this going back to what we were talking about with the later guys and then kind of just a, a almost personally strategy for me that i've been doing throughout this like we kind of talked about it you had which i've kind of noticed throughout doing these is we usually go to about 16 rounds and then i usually do what we just did and scroll through those names for a while write some down but it's like you know, 
I've been kind of taking it as it comes, trying to not get super duper running back heavy and seeing if I can make it work out at the end. But then, you know, and I do like the pennies, the max and all those other guys that, that I talked about those stabs. But then at the end, man, like you said, you can come back and fill in those wide receiver roles with older veterans. And yeah, I mean, I, I feel pretty comfortable in rookie drafts to replenish the stock of I'm always shooting to replenish the stock of running backs, but I especially, you know, I feel good to be able to get whatever I need in those drafts and, 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 you know, you're going to miss, but but you're going to hit, but like you can get the Crowders and the Corey Davises and the Jarvis Landry's and you can get points in your lineups with wide receivers who aren't necessarily as sexy. And you may be looking to them, you, you know, to replace them in a year or two, but you know, that's hopefully I drafted enough young guys throughout here that, you know, I probably can, I feel almost now more comfortable. Every year is different. And we talk about this all the time on how the front half of that draft shakes out as far as how heavy I'm going to be on running backs. Uh, I used to force it. I'm not going to force it anymore, but I feel like I'm getting more and more comfortable with saying that maybe I could uh, skip CD lamb and take Christian McCaffrey instead. And it might not be as fun two years from now because CD will probably be ascending and still being good. But if Christian McCaffrey plays, uh, probably the number one point getter in the league. Right. Um, and I, and I can, you know, I'm not going to reply. Obviously I'm not replacing CD lamb with Crowder way back in the back of the sure. draft, but I can get wide receiver starting points where, you know, there's there, when we went through all those lists of guys that we just talked about, it wasn't that many running backs. We weren't that, talking about running no, backs. No, no, no. Uh, we talked, so, we, I sat on, I've, I clicked on the quarterback tab for a little bit. You guys called out some of the names I looked at, but I went and sat on the wide receiver tab. Yep. Gerald Everett was a good call. Uh, Logan Hooper. Thomas is out there. There's some tight Hooper ends out Tungian there. who got but, drafted. But yeah, you love just, Hooper. Yeah, Hooper. Not oh, leaving without Hooper. Great call on Hooper. Even Higby to a certain extent as well, too. Sure, Could sure. Be. Yep. But you just go sit on that wide receiver. Start. I mean, you could literally get a couple flex starters in that spot. And, you know, if something breaks right, you know, Crowder – this or that, you you could be easily getting wide receiver two numbers for somebody that came in the seventeenth round. Maybe you round. get Terrace Marshall. Maybe you get Crowder and and Corey Davis, and then you let get me, Terrace Marshall. And I, I don't let me put Terrace a little let bit. Let me of put yoga. Terrace Marshall into a context and not be like I can't believe you said these two guys in the same name, in the same sentence. But years ago, Casey and I drafted Devontae Adams in the twentieth round with the last pick in the draft, 2020, 2012, pick 2012. The last pick in the draft was Devontae Adams coming off his rookie year, which was not spectacular, or he would not have been in the 20th round. Yeah. This year, you can get... The year before that, we drafted Robert Woods. The year before, before that. So this year, you can get Terrence both guys, Marshall both guys in at least the this. 17th round. You, yeah. you, there may be more picks to go, but it's, at 17-1, Terrence Marshall's on the board. Years back... The, the best wide receiver in the league, arguably now, after his first year in the league, was taken at 20, 20, 20, 20. 12, right? Yeah. By us. I know it happened. And some of the OGs would even remind us because we put on, we talked about it on the podcast. So Bobby Whoop, in back to back years, I don't remember if it was which one, but we, we did, you know, it's very, that's a very good point. I forgot about that. Like, it was Bobby Woods and Devontae Adams, both guys who – it was Bobby Woods when he was changing teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. And had, you know, I – you had had it some flashes, but he hadn't put it together. And it was Devontae Adams maybe third year or whatever where he hadn't quite caught on. And we – you know, those were back-to-back years picks where we – Last round. Last round because there's no way this could be, guy could be good anymore. He sucks. Yeah. Um, like you said, post-type sleepers. Terrence Marshall is the definition definition of a post hype sleeper, but not even like oh okay well let's find like a Brandon Ayuk ninth round, Brandon Ayuk still a stud, but if you take him and it doesn't work out this year, which it started, it's not like it won't, but you know it's Trey Lance, so it definitely he could easily not be in your starting lineup. He could be, yeah. he could make you feel like shit. But you're Julio gonna, is still in, out there in the ninth round. You're you're giving up. There's opportunity cost for Ayuk. And I still, yeah. I still say take him in the ninth round every time. But you know what I mean? Terrence Marshall's doubled that. Mm-hmm. 17th round at a minimum. There's no opportunity cost. And, it, and it's not to say that just because I named some older guys that I felt good about. And then Terrence Marshall, there are plenty. You, know, you, you named Donovan Peoples-Jones when, when I, I don't know what the contract situation is and how it works out with Watson being back in the fold. And there's Visca and there's Nico and there's, uh, you know, Josh Palmer and Velas. And, you know, there, there's, there's also young guys that can mix in that route of not just saying, 
hey, you get, you, you're only going to find these old veterans that are good for a year or two. You can also then continue to stab at some other wide receivers back there um, and be able to make some money. So I, I've been getting more and more comfortable this year saying, uh, you know, I might pass on a higher end wide receiver and, and go with a running back because yeah. there are some better options down low. And, and you know, or maybe um, maybe you didn't even make that you know decision in the second round but right. you could easily and make CD it in Lamb the fourth was probably, fifth or sixth cd yeah. Lamb swap swap yeah. for christian mccaffrey i guess that's not the worst example. oh no that's, i could take pretty, christian mccaffrey yeah. over cd all day long just because of the wide receiver options right. not necessarily you know hashtag in 17th rounders I, you know there's good ones all the way through i just named a couple of them in the ninth round that i wanted all of them yeah if i'm sitting here at 17 one i got no problem going don david bell and donovan people's jones absolutely at, at the turn bang bang give me both of them and i'll wait on the uh, well, david the, bell's gone is he gone already yeah he he's went gone. yeah okay well it same oh, difference oh, I, those those are two guys that i would love I actually i took I, him 13 six i do have <laughs> 13th. You know, but, but regardless, the, the point idea, you'll still take them both. Still, yeah, I have a team right now in the FFPC where I have both of them. And I'm just like, that's that's cool. I have yeah. the ability on the, even though it's short benches, I have the ability for both of those guys to sit on my bench and wait on Watson to get back to decide which one's going to be awesome. Yeah. Because one of them's going to be awesome. Yeah, And Brissette and Brissett could carry at least one of them as well, too. I'm not sure they're going to be a high-end guy, but they could be a bi-week start in or a yeah, flex I mean, play. It being... I doubt Brissett's in there starting every week and my rookie David Bell's out there, you know, being startable. Yeah. It, it's, it, he might drag me down for a minute, but I'm willing to see how long I can hold him. Yeah. Yeah. And if Amari's a healthy on the field and Nick Chubb and you got Brissett being quarterback, you're going to have to play the same game with Peoples Jones. Like, it, there's, I got decent money, I'd bet, that neither one, Dave Bell or Peoples Jones, is going to feel anywhere good near your starting lineup. You know, week to week. Week to week. Yep. Yeah, take out best ball. You're not going to want to start those guys if Watson ain't playing. That's fine. Yep. But, I'm, but I'll wait. But both still, David Bell's a rookie. DPJ's plenty young to, yeah, to roster year. him and, yep. and just hang on on a longer bench. So, All right. Well, we talked about it. We came in here, did, did some later round stuff. We appreciate you all for sticking around. Uh, go support the squad at revelrybrewco.com and get yourself a t-shirt. You can join the uh, Patreon at patreon.com backslash the FF Dynasty. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. You don't have to leave a comment at this point. You can just hit the five stars on any platform that you're listening. That All that stuff really helps us out if you don't want to help us out monetarily. Uh, I can respect that, but uh, if you've been listening for a while, think about it. Appreciate y'all. Uh, Matt, Big Co., Good to see y'all. Yeah, Tripod always a pleasure. Always. Effect, uh, and shout out to Jay Wayne. We'll see you next time. Quad pop. <laughs> we did this all for your pleasure.